Okay, hi everybody. Welcome, welcome. Beth Santos here from Wonderful. And tonight, today, whenever if you're watching the recording, you're watching this live, we have a very special show for you, a little bit of presentation, but mostly Q&A, when we're going to talk all about the wonderful and intrepid Women and Allies trip to Antarctica, which is happening in 2023. So two years from now, we are headed over. We have 100 spots on a ship that is headed to Antarctica January 2023. We're really excited about it. And I am excited to bring in a very special guest to talk some details. And before I do that, I want to say, too, we are watching your comments come in. So definitely feel free to post any comments, introduce yourself, tell us if you're thinking about the trip and ask questions, whatever questions you have, you have me and you're gonna have Intrepid today so we can answer everything. And of course their customer service is amazing so you can always ask them questions as well. But if you wanna do it now, now is your time. So let me bring in our special guest, Meg from Intrepid Travel. Hey Meg. Hey, hi um, everyone. Thank you for joining. It going? It's going well. I'm really excited um, to have an another departure date added to, to Antarctica. Yes, and we have somebody that just said they put down their deposit already. Woohoo! Yeah. So we are have been wanting to do this trip for ages and it is such a bucket list trip. And I think to tell you a bit about, you know, how we went into it, for those of you who are not familiar with Wonderful, we are a community of women who love to travel. We have this whole global membership network that you can access where you have um, women all around the world that you can meet up with whenever you travel. We have virtual events, we have in-person events, um, and we don't actually do a lot of trips ourselves we really connect women travelers to each other and we help them when they're going on their own trips. But every once in a while, people ask us for a trip. And one of the top ones was Antarctica for a number of reasons. And I think a lot of it is because, you know, it's that's such a big trip that when you go, you really want to make it special, right? You don't want to just go kind of by yourself or, you know, you want to make it a thing. And so we really thought about this and we thought, we've got this huge community of women, 40,000 women all around the world who love to travel, who may not have been able to check Antarctica off their bucket list, is there a possibility for us to do something and not only do something, but do something like in full wonderful style, right? Where we're actually having our own activities that we're doing, where we're all coming together, we're able to have this experience together. And so that was what eventually brought us to this idea of a women and allies trip to Antarctica. And I say and allies because everyone is welcome. If you wanna bring partners, family, there's just an age requirement. But besides that, anyone can come and be part of it. And then we'll be on board together. Um, Meg is going to talk all about the things that will be happening on board with Intrepid um, in terms of the programming, but we'll be able to have our own things as well. And, um, and it's just a, a really exciting opportunity to be able to actually do that together for the first time. And so, so we had a trip that was planned in 2022, which is still happening, but with everything with the pandemic, we thought let's shift the majority of those spots to 2023 and actually kind of re rebuild this. So we have a whole new trip coming in 2023. That's what we're talking about today. And we picked Intrepid, honestly, because if you haven't worked with Intrepid before, if you haven't gone on a trip with them, they have an incredible commitment to responsible travel. It's something that they talk about a lot. They focus significantly on sustainability. They focus significantly on ethics, on making sure that local communities are represented in all the places that they travel to. And when we chose Intrepid, a lot of the women in our network said, you know, who had been on trips had said, it's just, it's the top company I've ever been on a trip with. I have loved going with them. They're so thoughtful about this experience. And especially with a place like Antarctica, which is undergoing a lot of change due to climate, we want to make sure that we're working with somebody who is thinking about this stuff and who knows about this stuff. So that's why we brought them in. And, um, and I see some questions coming in, which is great. Meg, would you like to talk a little bit about the trip first, and then we can kind of jump into some of the questions after that? Definitely. Yeah, of course. Perfect. 
All right. Well, so, and I know you have a presentation, so I'm going to add it to the screen. And this is about 10, I think she was saying like 10 minutes of content so you all can get a good overview. And then we'll dive into the questions and, and answer everything. Awesome. So take it away, Meg. All right. I personally had the pleasure of taking a trip to Antarctica. So I did the same itinerary that um, we'll be going on with the wonderful. Um, so it's the best of Antarctica. Um, so I'll just give you a brief update or a brief explanation of what the in itinerary entails. And of course, if you have any questions at all, just write them all down and I'm happy to answer after. Um, so the departure date for the 2023 um, wonderful departure is January 11th um, until January the 21st. It's an 11 day itinerary. Uh, it starts and ends in Ushuaia, which is the um, tip in Argentina. Um, most flights, you'll be able to find a flight to Buenos Aires, and then there's a lot of daily departures to Ushuaia. Um, I usually recommend flying in a day or two early if you can, just in case there is any flight delays due to weather. And because Buenos Aires is a really, really cool city to travel around. Apparently, they have the best steak in the world as well, Whoa. if you're a big steak enthusiast, um, which is awesome. And Ushuaia is a really, really nice um, town. It's very small. It has about one or two streets, um, major streets with cafes and a lot of spots that you can grab extra gear because most of the people that travel there are either going to Patagonia or they're going um, to Antarctica, which is wonderful. Um, our boat, we have one boat that has about 15 departures each season um, back to back. So our boat is called, our ship is called the Ocean Endeavor. Um, it holds 200 passengers. And so uh, we're holding 100 spots for Wonderful. So half of the ship, which is wonderful, uh, wonderful. <laughs> but we have uh, 100 passengers that go on landings at a time. Um, so how it works is the 200 people split up into groups of 50 passengers. Uh, and then 100 of them go on the landing and walk around and hike and take pictures. A lot of them are either glaciers. Some of them can be research bases. It depends on um, where the expedition leaders take you that day, just because based on weather and how close you can get to things. Um, and then the other 100 passengers are either cruising around in the zodiacs, uh, around just either whales that are there, penguins that just hop beside you, or around the icebergs. Um, so you'll be doing something at any point in time once you hit Antarctica and get onto the zodiacs. Um, which is and, and Meg, just to add into that, you're saying that we have a hundred spots on the ship for two hundred, and I'm pretty sure that the one hundred people are going to convert the other one hundred people to become <laughs> wonderful members by the end yes. of the trip. So we're all going to be wonderful at the end of it's this. True. <laughs> it's wonderful too because you just talk to everyone on the ship too, so it, everyone has a great story and it's so interactive. And it really doesn't feel like two hundred people when you're on it because the ship is yeah. so big. Um, but again, a lot of people just sit around in the libraries or in the lectures and things like that, and you just learn a lot about everyone else on the trip, which is my favorite part. Um, the em embarkment is uh, once you get on the ship, there's safety briefings. Um, throughout the first couple of days when you're crossing the Drake, there's lecture programs from all of the expedition leaders. Um, so there'll be biologists, ge geologists, there'll be experts on birding, on whales, mm -hmm. um, just a bunch of different lectures that um, I found very useful. Just when you get there, you feel like you know more about the land and how pristine it is and how kind of secluded you feel. Um, the Drake obviously is, it's about two to sometimes three days, um, but mostly two days uh, to get there and on the way back as well. Um, they call it either Drake Lake or Drake Shake because it either mm -hmm. is a nice little smooth sail there or it's a little bit shaky. Um, I am incredibly seasick all the time and um, I just got one of those patches behind my ear which levels your um, ear, your mm. water levels in your ear, and it actually helped significantly. I wasn't sick at all. Um, they said ours was about a five out of 10 um, in terms of how rocky it could be, but uh, no one really seemed to have any, any issues. Um, there is an onboard doctor as well that prescribes. He just gives out kind of um, seasickness medication, and he's always there on call if you have any issues or you do need seasickness tablets, which is incredibly helpful. Um, there's usually like a, line, a lineup at first of people panicking, being like, I need more, uh, even though everyone brought their own. So it's nice to have uh, have them on the on the ship and able and able to provide that. Um, there's daily updates as well, just because every itinerary 
is pretty much different. So if I went on this trip, I have a completely different experience than anyone who's been on the same departure, the same mm -hmm. itinerary, just based on, on the weather. Um, we had three continental landings on ours, and most passengers have either one to could be five, depending on the weather. Um, but they will make sure that you get at least one continental landing so that you can say that you were on Antarctica. Been um, to the continent. <laughs> yes, I've been to the continent. Um, so it's wonderful. You go along the peninsula, and there is a list of all of the potential landing sites. Um, but ex the expedition leaders, they go out there every season and try to go to different ones because they also want to explore different regions. So they always try and make sure that you get the best experience. You get to see the most amount of things. And of course, they want to see them as well. So it's cool. just really, yeah. really exciting. Yeah. Um, so the aboard the ship again, 200 passengers. That's one, um, or sorry, one crew member to every eight passengers. So there's a lot of uh, help there. You have a, a lot of staff in the restaurants, in the hotel, um, like for your cabins. There's turn down service, and then of course expedition leaders. And there's a gym, library. There's views at the top that you can see all the way around. There's a sauna, a wellness spa. The spa prices as well are very similar to what you would get if you went to a spa anywhere else in mm -hmm. America. So it's not um, overpriced, it's pretty reasonable as well. Uh, there's yoga classes held every morning during the expedition. You just sign up in the morning. Um, it's really nice and relaxing, especially when you are going across the Drake. Um, I figure once, once we get to Antarctica, there's a lot of people that wanted to do it in the morning, but everyone is usually too excited to get out on the Zodiac. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it was nice when you're crossing the Drake as well for something to do. Um, again, the guides are all either um, nat naturalists, marine biologists, historians, um, and there's a photographer on the ship as well that takes guest photos so that you can log into mm -hmm. the journal after so you can see all of the photos that were taken, um, especially if you're not always... Uh, alert and paying attention or like they can just come behind and take photos which is always really nice to that. have yeah That's it's always me like being yeah. like I should take a photo right now oh, I'm not going to and then regretting it later so yeah or That's I hate awesome. I always bothering people when they're having like a really great moment like looking at something and being like can you take a picture of me and <laughs> yeah. then yeah. yeah but of course you can obviously do that but it's just really nice to have like the moments that you don't know are being filmed um someone taking them um, and the activities again there is a photography program which the photographer usually helps with your with lenses to choose and kind of tells you how to take pictures um properly if you there's a lot of um photography enthusiasts that do book on. Um, sometimes we have groups that are just photography based. Uh, the difference mainly is the Zodiac's forward face. Otherwise the Zodiac's usually use it along the side. So those are the difference on the photography program and the photographer goes um, as the guide for the Zodiac's. Uh, and we do have kayaking and camping, um, which are limited spaces, um, but sorry, kayaking is written twice there, but we do have camping and kayaking. Again, mm -hmm. limited spaces, there's usually 30 to each departure. So if you do want to do those activities, you just have to let us know at the time of booking and we'll let you know what's available. Um, kayaking, you do need prior uh, experience just because um, it is sea kayaking. You will have obviously two guides there with you. It's just important that you do know how to kayak. You'll be in dry suits. Uh, and then we do have snowshoeing as well, and that's on board. So you do not need to book ahead. It's uh, weather-based. Um, parka and boots are available for loan. Um, so every single person will get the same parka, which is why you always see photos of Antarctica and everyone is wearing the same thing <laughs> magically. Um, so you you do get to um, keep the inner uh, puff part of the jacket, but the outer part is just alone. But then you don't really need to lug it because usually when you go into Buenos Aires at that time of year, it's really hot. So you don't actually need it. Um, again, there's laundry available too, so you don't need to pack as much as you think you do, um, especially with your layers. But uh, of course, we can do a full webinar on packing because it you really yes. need to know That's what, what to do. pack. Yes, yeah, totally. it's my favorite thing to, to like read about because I always pack too much and I always pack the wrong thing. And so for I, the parkas, do you, I assume that you have like a full range of sizes available. Is there anything people should know about sizing of those? Um, before you travel, so a, a couple months before, uh, we'll take down everyone's boot size and parka okay. size just to ensure that the ship will have it. And then when you okay. get there, if it doesn't fit for some reason, there's always extras there as well. Okay, great. And somebody just asked, I'm going to bring this up because we're talking about it yeah, now. They, they, so they do they need to worry about bringing a heavy coat of their own? No. 
The okay. parkas are waterproof and you don't need to bring it. You will need to bring waterproof pants. Um, my waterproof pants were really thin because um, it didn't really matter how thick they were because you can wear so many layers underneath. Um, but it really cool. isn't as cold as you may think it is. The water mm -hmm. is cold if it like um, gets on you a little bit, but it doesn't really, in the Zodiac, it's so calm when you're there that you don't really get any splash or anything like that. Um, sometimes it get your hands get cold, so packing extra mittens um, was really helpful and waterproof. But no, you do not need to bring a coat. Um, which is nice for anyone that lives yeah. in, the, in the warmer states as well, because you Great. probably don't have a huge winter parka. <laughs> are you still doing the polar plunge thing yes. where you go into, oh, you are, oh. Yes, so you can, that's an, an activity that is um, free of charge on the ship. You usually jump off of the um, docking, so where you actually get off to go on the Zodiacs, um, and you tie you up to harness just in case you like go oh, into shock, to shock quickly. I was in and out within seconds, you couldn't even notice it. And then they give you a shot of vodka and you just go on your way. And then there's a, the heated pool that is on the back deck. So wow. everyone that did the polar plunge just went in and sat in the heated pool. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a great experience and everyone else just watching us like, why are you doing this? And I the think photographer- I would only do it. I would only do the polar plunge if there were a heated pool at the end. So yeah. yeah. That helped a lot. And the photographer took photos of everyone doing it. So it was actually quite nice to have that a, a few weeks later, just to remember that you did do that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> right. It, was it wasn't just a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I did jump into Antarctica and you can see icebergs behind. So it was really cool, but it was nice. Um, and I know that Beth touched on responsible travel, which is really important to Intrepid Travel. Um, we are double carbon offsetting all of our departures now. Um, before they were just carbon offset but now we are making sure that they're double carbon offset um, no single-use plastics on board and all of our the food is sustainably sourced mm -hmm. um, which is really great and we also follow the IATO guidelines which everyone traveling to Antarctica um, travels follows those guidelines which and um, just make sure that there's no averse impacts on the environment so it just means that every time you go off the ship and back on the ship they spray everything down so you'll leave your jacket um sometimes you can just get your jacket cleaned from them but you leave your boots and they spray everything and they spray all of the equipment so that there's no um impact on traveling from different parts of the peninsula to the other parts which is really wonderful that's great and the cabins, which is always the number one um, hot topic when we get phone calls, but all of the cabins are available to book now. So um, if you are ready to book or if you have any questions, um, they are the allocation for Wonderful is ready now um, for the January 11th departure. And we also currently have a sale on it as well from categories five to 10. Um, it wow. will vary differently uh, based on the cabin category. But again, all of the prices are live on our website now with the sale and the sale does go until March 31st. Um, so if you have any questions about that uh, or any of the cabins, um, all there's a certain amount held in each cabin category for Wonderful. But um, if you wanted more of, of one, then we can just look into the availability as well. Just mention that you're a part of the Wonderful group um, so that we're aware. Um, and uh, there's a minimum age of eight um, years old on the ship. If you have any passengers that are younger, you can let us know and we can see um, what the restrictions are for, for the departure, but um, usually it's a minimum age of eight um, enforced. There's solo passengers can share with other passengers um, of the same gender on the trip. So if you didn't have anyone to travel with, um, I wouldn't worry. I went alone as well and I had my cabin mate who was wonderful. Um, and so you just get placed with another female or male, depending on your gender, um, in the same cabin. They're all twin share for most of the cabin categories from category one until category eight. And then we do have some double options um, once you hit the premium uh, levels. We do have more single cabins now available because of COVID-19, um, just in case more passengers did feel more comfortable in a cabin by themselves. There's also more safety precautions on board because of COVID-19. Um, so that is, there's also a safety document online about that, which uh, is wonderful to read, um, but we are following all of the guidelines for COVID-19. Um, so if you are looking for a single cabin as well, we do have those available and there are more um, for our next two departures because of that. Um, and all right. of the details and dimensions and everything are online for you. And a couple of notes on that too, because you were talking about solo travelers and 
Um, and I know we have a lot of solo travelers in our community. And that's one of the reasons why I think this trip is so special, because even though you're never alone when you're on a cruise, it's always it's like you're even less alone because now you're part of this group and part of something. And that's why we are also you know, looking to do a couple of our own activities, whether it's just finding times to eat together. So you always have somebody that's a friendly face to eat with or doing some other um, activities on board. And um, I know a few of you have had questions about roommates and we are collaborating very deeply with Intrepid in the sense where they're letting us know who's signing up, who's becoming part of Wonderful so that we can make sure that you're getting invited to all of the things that we're doing. But also I think Meg, you, were, you had mentioned that um, if you want, we can also make sure that it's a wonderful person that you're rooming with if you do end up being in a place where it's two beds, but you know, you're booking solo, we can still make sure that you're rooming with somebody from Wonderful. Is that right? Yeah. So if you had mentioned when you're booking that you're part of the Wonderful group, we do um, we do put you with another member that has booked in the same cabin category um, from Wonderful. Um, if you are in another cabin category that no one has booked yet, um, we still try and manage it so that we can let you know to either upgrade or if you want to downgrade to a different cabin to share with someone from Wonderful. But um, we'll do everything that we can um, once you book to be placed with another um, passenger that is from Wonderful. Yeah, and they're really good about, yeah, those special requests. And I know there's an, a couple other questions that have come in about that. One being, you know, if you already know who you would like to have as your roommate, can you sort of indicate that when you're booking and say, you know, I have this other person who's booked and I want to be roommates with them? Definitely. If you if you want to book separately um, so that you have two different booking, because um, you can log in online. So if you want to keep your booking separate from someone else's, we can just link the bookings as long as you're in the same cab cabin category. Um, so you can just let us know um, anyone on live chat or email us or call us and we can just uh, let our operations team know that you'll be in the same cabin. It's not a Great. problem at all. Perfect. Yeah. Um, how do you book? You can call us um, anytime. Our phone line is 24 seven, but our North American team work um, currently from Monday to Friday from 10 till six Eastern Standard Time. Um, so we do have a small marine team um, that specializes in polar in our, we're in, um, based in Toronto. So our Toronto office has um, five specialists. Um, four of us have been to Antarctica, so we're happy to answer um, any questions that you have about the ship, the experience, or anything like that. And we love talking about it, of course. Um, so feel free to give us a call. You can email us. And um, we have a specific email address called uh, voyages at intrepidtravel.com. And again, we're on live chat as well. You can just ask to speak to someone on the marine or polar team, and we uh, just jump on when we're available. Uh, the payment is $1,000 for a deposit, uh, and the final payment is 95 days prior to departure. So you have almost two years to, yeah. to save. We just require the deposit of 1000 Online, it says that the you require 20% of the published rate, but um, because of Wonderful and the promotion that we currently have, it is only going to be $1,000 per person um, in order to confirm your space, which is wonderful. And that was so important for us. I think knowing that this is an expensive trip, we're not gonna sugarcoat that, You know, going to Antarctica and whatever way you go is gonna be expensive. And so we really wanted to make sure that we put this trip far enough out that you had time to save. And so um, so Intrepid has been so willing to work with us on this and accept payments all throughout the time. So you get a bonus at work, you know, this, this <laughs> fall or winter time, you can just push that right to the Antarctica trip and you don't have to worry about having certain deposits by certain days. The only deposit you have to do is by the April 15th, that's our deadline for deposits. And that's the $1,000. And you'll see at the bottom of the screen, the little ticker that's going. Um, and uh, so Intrepid has their own page that you're using to book. But just to make it easy for you to remember, if you go to she'swonderful.com slash Antarctica, that's a landing page that'll take you to the Intrepid page. And it also has an email sign up. So if you're maybe not sure if you want to sign up quite yet, you can get on our email list and we'll send you updates as we go up until April 15th. So then you can kind of continue to get that information. Um, and if you're watching this from the Antarctica Facebook group, then you know it's there. But if you didn't know, we do have a group on Facebook too called Women and Allies Trip to Antarctica. So you can join that as well and meet some of the other um, prospective travelers and get to know them and get anything that you need to get answered, answered. 
Yes, we are also, the Marine team is also in that Facebook group. So if you ask right. anything there, we monitor it and we can answer as well. Um, and hopefully we'll have some webinars up soon um, on how to pack and um, things you might be more interested in on that specific to the voyage, um, which is really helpful information when you are ready to buck. Perfect. Well, and I thank you so much, Meg, for going through this too. And I think it's so helpful to just have a little bit of an overview. We do have a whole bunch of questions. So okay. I'm just going to throw them at you. And I try to answer a good number of them, at least during this. But also continue. If you have questions, keep dropping in. We're going to answer them for you. Rebecca asked, food options, buffet or plated? And I think you said buffet. Um, actually, it's a la carte, some dinners. Oh, okay. um, and the a la carte, everything is really um, catered to any dietary restrictions. Um, so I have a gluten intolerance. So they have usually about when you go to an a la carte restaurant, it's the same. There's probably like four or five options for each um, appetizer entree. And then there's also a separate um, menu at the bottom that if you want just like a pasta or something basic like that, or if you're feeling a little nauseous, there's always um, a separate menu at the bottom. And then the buffets, you usually for breakfast and lunch, but they also have um, little uh, uh, cooking stations in the middle as well. So they make like a fresh stir fry for you when you're standing there. So the food options are crazy. Awesome. There is so too much food. <laughs> well, too much. you know me as, as the famously <laughs> pregnant woman over here, I'm like, food sounds great. Though hopefully, <laughs> let's all hope I'm not still pregnant in two years. That would be really, <laughs> really rough for all of us. So no, that's great. Um, and we have a question about special activities that Wonderful will have. So, and we're still working out the details on that. And what we want to do is get a lot of your feedback too of what you would like to do, whether it's eating meals together, whether it's doing some programming that's specifically talking about travel. You know, we've talked with Intrepid about using some of their rooms when they're not using them for actual workshops or, you know, educational events. Um, we can do meetups, we can do any number of things. So, those will be things for us. We're also looking at putting together a little bag little care package for everybody Welcome who's coming in from wonderful. Yeah. So you'll have that in your, when you, you whether you check, when you check in or on your bed or however we arrange it so that that'll have some goodies in there, probably some of that good stuff that you were talking about for um, any seasickness in case, you're <laughs> but we'll be fine. It'll yes. be super It'll smooth, be <laughs> lovely. You know, I already, I already talked to mother nature and she said it's going to be sunny and beautiful and we're going to have really nice weather and no problem. It is the so, best time to travel as well. It is the, the most ideal time to travel to Antarctica because all the snow is slowly melting. So it's not as rough when you do go there. So it is the most ideal departure date, um, or January wow. and February. Well, and what a great way to kick off the year, right? We're all, oh, excited, yeah. you know, it's going to be a new year and it's like our new year's, our new year's gift to ourselves. So, um, and then let me go through some of these. Uh, is there any alcohol included or is there any wine on board? There Very is plenty, plenty of wine on board. Um, there's no alcohol included in the cost, but the pricing of the bar is actually lower than what you would usually find at a, a restaurant. So I think the beers were about four or five US dollars um, and the bottles of wine are is similar 20, they're probably 20 to 35, depending on what it is. Um, okay. So there, there's, di there's wine and beer available for dinner to order um, and you just get a cabin card once you get there so honestly i don't know how they do it but every single person there always remembers your name and your cabin number and so you don't usually need to say it they just put it on your cabin um, number or you give them your card and then you pay for it at the very end um, and there's a bar available after dinner um, where most people hang out and they do like karaoke and trivia Aww, nights and fun. they do a really cool um Sometimes the expedition leader talks about all of their, because they've been over usually 50 expeditions, they talk about their time. It's really, really a highlight of the trip for sure. Love that. And there is a question about, um, let's see, so single supplements, I don't have a travel partner yet. And I think I understand that there, if you're booking a room with twin beds, you're going to be placed with a partner. So there's not a single supplement per se. It is that right? There's no forced single supplement, so it's not co compulsory. You can book a room. If you want to book a twin room on your own, then there will be a single supplement. It'll be 70% of the cost of the cabin. Um, but if you want a single room as well, we do have three different categories of just single rooms available that are all a reasonable price, a little bit more than what you pay for a double. Um, so you can either share with someone, you can get a single room, or you can get a twin room and pay the single supplement. And there's a question that came in very early that I want to make sure I answer because I know there's a lot more coming in. And that was on if there is a height and weight limit for launch excursions. No. No. 
Easy enough. The okay. only issue you might have with height is the bed length um, if you're extremely tall. Um, but usually, because the beds are all um, put on the they're all locked on the ground, so that there's no movement during the drake. Um, so that might be the only issue. If you're extremely tall, it might be uncomfortable for you. But I assume you would get that in most hotel rooms <laughs> that you stay at, anyways. Totally. Okay. Great. And do you have, uh, see, will, co okay, so let's talk COVID and let's talk insurance because there's a lot of questions coming on those types of things, refunds, et cetera. Um, will COVID vaccines be a requirement? Do you know, I know you said you're taking a lot of steps um, in light of COVID. Is that something that you've been planning on? Um, at this stage, there's no requirement for a COVID vaccine. So you don't, you're not required to have it just because I know a lot of different, we have everyone traveling globally from all around the world. And I know a lot of countries aren't um, ruling it out as quickly as North America and Europe have. Um, so there's yeah. no, there's no requirement at this stage for any vaccinations. Um, if there are any requirements to have a negative COVID test, it will depend on the borders and the international travel regulations. So currently there are, there are, no international travelers able to go to Argentina. Um, but for say like Ecuador right now allows passengers, but you have to have a negative test taken 48 hours before you enter. Um, so if there's anything like that, all passengers will be advised of any travel regulations. And you just have to make sure that you check the state department and the CDC requirements before you return to your country to make sure that you don't have to quarantine or that you don't, because I know America right now, the CDC is you re are required to take one 48 hours before you return and you have to quarantine now for 10 days. Um, so things like that will just depend on where we're at two years from now. And if that is required um, as a regulation by the, the, country, the country that you are returning to and the country that you are visiting, which is Argentina. Um, so we'll just have to kind of wait to see um, what will happen with that. But to board the ship, you won't require that at any time um, at this time, just because we don't have uh, that, that much information because it keeps changing frequently. But for safety regulations, there, um, if, if it is still quite uh, fragile, and uh, there might be times where a mask is required, but not at this time, just because we don't know how it will be for our next departures. But there are sanitation stations everywhere as well now, and there's a lot more um, cleaning areas and things like that. And everything, everything is quite sanitary, anyways, just because of how pristine the area is uh, and how many <laughs> crew there are. They're always cleaning. Um, so, so safety on board um, has been taken as a high priority just for our crew as well as our passengers. Meg, I'm really trying to stump you here, but you're like <laughs> answering all these questions. So we're gonna keep going. Monica, and I can answer this one. Monica wants to know, only women for this trip? No, that is not true. Yes. That's why we're calling this the Women and Allies trip. Anyone is welcome, whether you're part of the Wonderful community, whether you've just heard of Wonderful in passing, whether you're friends or family of a Wonderful member. So everybody is invited. Um, the Can you talk about, uh, is there insurance that's being provided with this? Do you have recommendations of insurance companies that people should look into? And related to that, how is the refund policy looking? I know a lot of people are worried based on past trips that were canceled you know, due to COVID. So can you talk about that? Yes. Um, so insurance is uh, mandatory once you go into polar areas. Uh, this is not included in the cost of the trip. Um, you will just need travel insurance, how you would regularly get travel insurance once you go abroad. However, you would just want to contact them directly to make sure that polar regions are included. Some insurance does not in include that area, um, Antarctica being the area. So uh, we recommend Allianz. Um, and so when you book, you'll also get in your confirmation more information about Allianz and a link to get a quote if you'd prefer. Um, but you can use any insurance that you regularly use for travel. I would just recommend you call them and make sure the polar region is covered. Um, and you would want to just make sure that evacuation is covered under the polar region, which is generally why some insurance companies don't cover Antarctica. Um, mm. But it won't be included in the cost. It'll be an additional cost to you. Um, some in reference to COVID as well with insurance, the Allianz has an additional supplement cost per day for COVID if, if that is still the case two years from now. Um, but um, we're obviously uncertain, but I think it's a $1.50 or something additional um, coverage. So you pay that in case there's any sort of cancellations or in case you get sick with COVID, things like that. Um, so that's always good to know when you're talking to them about if the package does include anything to do with um, COVID. And for our cancellation policy, we just switched to flexible booking conditions. So our terms and condition, conditions 
have changed a little bit since COVID-19, of course. So if you do book, um, the final payment is due 95 days prior to departure. So at that point, you'd have only paid $1,000. Uh, and once you book uh, at 95 days and pay the final payment, then your uh, cost is non-refundable. Um, outside of 95 days, if you need to cancel, we hold your credit on file for indefinitely. <laughs> so you can hold the $1,000 on file as a credit and use towards any trip with Intrepid Travel, um, or you can use it to book if you want it to book for the following season. Um, of course, it won't be with the wonderful community, but if you're still really wanting to go to Antarctica and you can't travel um, in two years from now, you can book onto the following season, or again, you can book onto any trip. So from now until um, 95 days prior to January 11th, um, you have the option to cancel and hold as a credit. Great. And there are a couple of questions just about costs in general, whether it's, you know, if you have any idea of like what the average cost of insurance might be. And then I know we talked about some optional things that are going to be happening on board. Are there any additional costs besides what they're paying that they have to be that they would have to, you know, add on to their trip just so that they know how to budget for this? Um, sorry, what was the, the first oh, question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. Uh, one is, Average cost of insurance, oh, yes. something like this, if you happen to know, two is any other cost that they should be aware of. Yes. The insurance, um, tech, I, I remember my insurance being a less than $200, but um, okay. I don't have any pre con pre existing conditions or anything like that. It, it, it depends on how long you plan on traveling. So if you're planning on traveling to say Patagonia after, or if you're doing any additional traveling before or after, it will cost more. Um, if you're traveling further, from, I've traveled from Toronto, but if you're traveling a further distance and your flight costs more, it might cost you more just to get a cancellation insurance over that. Um, if your cabin, of course, costs more, it might cost you a little bit more because your cancellation insurance would be higher. Um, but again, it depends on what package you get, but it shouldn't, it should usually cost around 150 to 300. If you have any pre existing conditions, um, you'll have to fill out a medical questionnaire with the insurance and then they'll uh, send you a quote based on your medical conditions. Um, sometimes, also, uh, when you are traveling to Antarctica, you can't bring specific subscriptions prescriptions prescriptions mm -hmm. um so if there is that th if that is the case we do ask medical questions prior to traveling and if your medication is not something that you can bring into that country um the doctor will usually um ask, send a letter to your doctor to get a generic brand of that or to get a different kind of brand of that so that you're able to bring your medication um and additional costs the only additional cost that you would have on the trip is if you are planning on doing the kayaking um, or if you're planning right. on doing um, any of the camping or photography program, but that'll be purchased beforehand. Um, snowshoeing is available. I think it's only about $100 or $200 US if it is available when you're there, but all of the other um, onboard activities and, and everything like that is included in the cost. The only thing that isn't is alcohol. Um, if you go to the bar um, and there is a gift shop on board as well, it will have extra cool. gear, gear and stuff like that. Um, I bought postcards and then we shipped the postcard there it took one year to get to my oh, house oh my god <laughs> but it was there. that's like my aunt went to argentina and all i have is this lousy t-shirt <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> i think they do have that shirt there if they don't argentina. oh my god antarctica <laughs> I, I bought an antarctica sweater and i still have it and i wear it like sometimes and people are just like did you go there and then it just starts a conversation but that's i usually it. cry when i talk about my experience of <laughs> antarctica so people are like okay you love it um <laughs> but the gift shop <laughs> the gift shop is good for like souvenirs as well as if you forgot to bring an extra cool. pair of mittens we'll have it there awesome as well. and bethany says meg really knows her stuff and that <laughs> is so so true we are continuously trying to stump you here a um, <laughs> couple more questions that have come in one is um, you know, getting to Argentina on your own to depart, right? There's not any flights that are included with this. You have to, sh you have to arrive in Ushuaia and then that's when you're, um, going on board. Yes. So yeah. you'll fly directly into Ushuaia and um, you'll want to get there a day before if you can, of course, because of any delays and um, the ship won't wait for you if you are late um, just because they are all back to back departures. Um, so I always recommend going in a day or two early if you have the time just in, to ensure that you get there on time. There is one night spent in the hotel prior to your embarkment because you okay. um, 
you'll arrive at the hotel, the expedition leader will explain everything to you about the following day, uh, and then you'll go on and it's the most organized <laughs> process that you've ever seen. It's just a lineup of um, people and crew, um, which is wonderful. And um, the flights aren't included, but they're not that difficult usually to get to. It depends again where you're flying from, but um, I, I spent four days in Buenos Aires prior. We do have short breaks and um, like short stays or day trips and things like that available in Buenos Aires. So if you wanted to meet up with a smaller group before that or have a guide, um, if you feel more um, safety wise, if you feel better being with a guided tour and things like that, you can book onto a Buenos Aires tour before and then fly from Buenos Aires to Ushuaia. And again, there's a lot of departures for that. So you shouldn't have any problem. And once you arrive in Ushuaia, it is the smallest little town. And so uh, I usually can get a taxi for about $5 to get to the starting point hotel. Um, or there's usually shuttles from the hotel into town and things like that. It's very small. Great. And Haley wants to know if the live stream will be available to view when it has ended. The answer is yes. So this live stream will be available. All you have to do is go right back to the link where you saw it, um, which is going to be on the wonderful page in our Wonderful Women Who Travel Facebook group and in our Antarctica Facebook group. We'll also be uploading this to um, Instagram and a couple other channels. So you'll be able to access this as well. Couple of questions about um, non-alcoholic beverages, if those are included, and if there are snacks in between meals, which I think is very important. <laughs> very important question. <laughs> um, there, there's uh, drinks included, non-alcoholic drinks included during all of your meals, so you can obviously have as much water as you would like. Um, but there's also juice and pop and thing like things like that available. Um, for when you are not in your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there's usually an afternoon tea time where they have the most amount of snacks of just like little sandwiches, pastries, things like that. And then you go there the day, the day before, that'll usually send an agenda. So they'll say, high tea is at 4 p.m. tomorrow. And then you go oh. to the Aurora Lounge, they have a high tea. There is never too much there's food everywhere they have apples around if because usually it's good for nausea too which i didn't know but green apples are really good oh. for nausea um there's a juice bar um usually with coffee as in tea as well available um for passengers oh. but um i brought snacks which i didn't really eat it's just if i was hungry or if i felt nauseous and didn't want to go for breakfast or things like that but usually i just got up and you can always bring food too from your lunch breakfast or dinner and bring it into your cabin if you want um just because there's a lot of fruit available so that's always interesting as well great but, but beverages yes non-alcoholic beverages are included yeah. except for at after meal time at the bar um pop might be about a dollar okay and monica is asking about equipment and monica if you once the recording is available i would definitely recommend you take a look at that too because meg gave some good information about the details of the trip so boots are included parka is included and there's an inner lining that you're able to take home with you so yes. that's, that'll be like a nice souvenir. Yes. Um, where are most travelers coming from, from what you've seen? Are they usually based in the States? Are they all around the world? Like, is it's different for every trip or do you have a sense? Um, it's usually different for every trip. Um, we're an Australian based company. So um, majority of our intrepid trips are about 75% Australian, and then the rest make up oh. from Europe or North America. For our Antarctica, we've gotten a lot more North American interest. So I would say that maybe half are Canadian, uh, American, and then a lot of Europeans, um, mostly from the UK, and then Australia, New Zealand. I love that. It's yeah, just a whole I, world coming it's together. so nice too. And, and you were speaking oh, earlier <laughs> about, <laughs> I know. You were speaking earlier about dinner and arranging sitting with dinner. Um, that was my favorite time because everyone kind of just like went to a different table every day and sat with someone. And I sat with this man named Frank and I still talk to him. He was Aww. this 75 year old man from America and he was the nicest man. And he came up to me on the last day and asked if I would eat dinner with him that evening. And he was so nice and everyone knew him. And he was like my favorite person on the trip. And so every time I did anything, I did it with Frank and I made sure that he was 
was always like not didn't feel alone but he traveled by himself to antarctica and he had the coolest stories and uh it's just i never i didn't go on there expecting to meet a older gentleman that had so many cool stories and i wanted to eat dinner with every night so it's it's really interesting to sit with different people especially if there are a hundred wonderful um, women and men on the trip, you'll get to know so many people from different er different countries and different areas and different states that um, you'll have so much in common with. It's really wonderful. I love that. I love that. And then a couple more things. Um, one, and this might have to be taken offline, I know, depending on, but I know Rebecca had a question that she's actually going on our 2022 trip and was looking to maybe push it to 2023. Is that something that she can talk about with your team? Yeah, definitely. Okay. She can just email us or give us a call, live chat us, and um, we can move the allocation for the following season. That goes to okay. anyone that has a book right. for the following season. Yeah, so reach out to them and they can definitely help you with any modifications that you want to make there. Um, and uh, what were the a couple other questions? Do you need to be a waterfall runner? Nope, nope, this is open to anybody, anybody who wants to come. So we'd love to have you. Um, and uh, a couple questions about logistics coming into Ushuaia. One was wondering if she could stay overnight in Buenos Aires first and then catch a flight to Ushuaia the day of departure. But you're saying that you're asking everybody to arrive the day before, is that right? Well, if they book a flight from Buenos Aires to Ushuaia for the morning of the departure, as long as they are arriving in Buenos Aires or the or Argentina prior to that, you shouldn't have any delay issues just okay. because you will spend one night in the hotel. So as long as you are there that day and you don't have any delays, um, you usually embark the following day around um, mid afternoon, sometimes early afternoon. Um, so as long as you're there for the start date of your trip. Um, you can spend as much time in Buenos Aires as you like and then fly to Ushuaia on January 11th. It's a short awesome. flight too, very, very short. Great, and I love this question. Some uh, Genevieve is asking if binoculars are recommended or provided so that you can do bird and other creature watching and stargazing. A lot of a lot of people brought their own binoculars because there there's a lot of birders on there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, there's a lot of birders on there. There's actually someone on there who's seen every single family species species family of species of birds except for the albatross. And then he saw one and he was like, it was like everyone was happy for him. It was wonderful. But there is a birder on the um, ship too that usually they go on the PA and say like, to your left, if you look out, it, it's with everything on the ship. But to your left, look out, there's an albatross flying above us. To your right, there's a pod of um, humpbacks, things like that. So then everyone jumps outside and goes to the side of the ship. Yeah. Um, but you can bring your own, but there are some available, but they're in the bridge, which is where the captain and all the crew stay, which you are allowed to go to too, just not while they're um, moving around, um, which is my one of my favorite places too, because they sometimes they're just listening to Disney music up there and like having the time of their life. <laughs> and they're just singing along, but you can stand up there and there's always an expedition leader up there. So if you have any questions, they answer it for you. And they're always looking for animals up there to tell the passengers about. So uh, there's binoculars up there. I think there was about three or four pairs, um, but you just can't leave the bridge without them. And then there's some in the library. But if you are an avid bird watcher or you um, really want to have your own, I would recommend just bringing you. Love this. Well, Meg, I don't want to take up any more of your time because I know I promised you 30 minutes. And <laughs> <have> so <laughs> many good questions and you've answered them all so well. And so I will just, what I'm going to do is just put your slide back on the screen really quickly so everyone can see. Um, and the booking, so if you go to what's ticking along the bottom of the screen here, she'swonderful.com slash Antarctica, that'll take you to the booking page um, for Intrepid Travel. It'll also take you to an email sign up if you wanna make sure you're on our email list. Um, there's also a link there to our Facebook group so you can meet some of the other people who are thinking about attending you. It is not just for women, anybody can join. That's why we're calling it Women and Allies. We are recording this whole presentation. So if you just access it via the link that you've been watching, you can do that. Deposits are a thousand US dollars. They're due April 15th. After that, you, if there is room, you can still make a deposit, but we cannot guarantee that there's going to be any space. So they're holding these spaces for us until April 15th. We've got a hundred spots available for wonderful. Bring your family, your partner, anybody that you've been wanting to travel to, anyone eight and up is welcome. Um, if you have other questions, you can always, even if you're watching the um, the recording, go ahead and drop them in the comments. We'll see them. If you join the Facebook group, which is the Women and Allies Trip to Antarctica group, 
Um, Meg is in there, I am in there, so we can answer those questions for you. But I'll tell you the customer service with Intrepid is fantastic. And it's one of the reasons we chose them. So you can just reach out to them directly, get your questions answered, go ahead and book. You don't have to have a roommate in order to book. We'll pair you with another wonderful person so that you are not alone. We're gonna have all sorts of wonderful activities to do together. <laughs> Thinking of like all the other things that we've said throughout this, You'll have two years to make all of your payments. So this really, if you ever have a plan to go to Antarctica in your life, I really think that this is the time to do it. So definitely keep that in mind. Meg, any last words, pieces of advice, recommendations <laughs> from you? Um, I mean, this is my favorite. I've been to over 55 countries and I will always go back to Antarctica. Um, it is, it's just so peaceful. Um, when you see the wildlife and even the icebergs for the first time, you just start crying and everyone mm -hmm. on that trip goes through the same thing with you. So it's just an incredible experience. Um, I had the best time of my life on that trip and I went alone, um, not knowing what to expect. So um, I wouldn't hesitate about it. I would book it. Um, it is now because of COVID. Um, there's a lot of, all seasons have been canceled for the following year. So it is becoming more popular because everyone's rebooking. So it is the best time to go now, especially with climate change and things like that. Um, and it's still the everyone who goes there uh, is sustainable based on the IATA, IATO principles. So um, it's it's a great experience, and I would recommend it to everyone. And I'm not just saying that because I work for Intrepid. Um, it is you wonderful. You went yourself. Yeah, yeah you went I yourself. Loved it. It was so wonderful. Speaking from a passenger perspective too. That's great. Well, and I'll be there. I can't wait. I cannot wait to meet all of you who come. I know it's going to be an amazing time. So I'm looking forward to meeting you all. Meg, thank you so much again for taking the time, especially we're recording this at almost eight o'clock at night now. I'm sure you have plenty of other things to do on a work night. So thank you for being here. I'm happy to help. Any questions, of course, ask our Marine team. I'm on the Marine team. I'm available. Um, ask us anything. We're always happy to help. If we don't know the answer right away, we will get it for you as soon as possible. So um, please, please just let us know if you have any concerns or questions after this as well. Great. And thank you, everyone, for all of you who watched and asked questions. I hope that this has answered a lot of things for you. I'm really excited to see you on board. Definitely continue to ask those questions. Go visit the site, get on our email list, join our Facebook group so that you continue to get that information. We've got a couple months left um, that we're taking those initial deposits. So use that time. And we'll see you in Antarctica. Thanks Yay. again, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, rest of your night. Bye. Bye.